It's time to talk about June's Journey, a hidden object mystery game with a captivating detective story. When you're playing, you solve a mind-teasing mystery of the roaring 1920s while you dive into June's captivating quest to uncover a scandalous family secret and solve her sister's murder. It's mystery, it's danger, and it's romance, and you never know where the next chapter's gonna take you. If that wasn't fun enough, you get to customize your very own luxurious island estate. Seriously, I cannot stop playing. I am already on the third chapter, and I just started recently. Join me back in time in the glamorous 1920s. June needs your help, detective. Download June's Journey for free today on iOS and Android. Hello, Murder Diaries listeners. I want to give you a quick Uncovered update. Like many businesses and households today, Uncovered is feeling the sting of the current economic landscape and has been forced to make some difficult decisions. Over the past few months, our dedicated full-time staff has transitioned to reduced hours. As a result, our backlogs are growing, and our capacity to quickly add cases to the database, implement new site features, and connect with and support families has diminished. While we wait for the tides to change, our CEO, Jim Brown, has made two unwavering commitments. The Uncovered Database will endure, and so will our amazing community of researchers and advocates. We would like to thank the more than 150,000 people who visit our site each month. For you, we are grateful, because together, we are and will continue to make a difference. This week on The Murder Diaries, we're talking to Dana Pohl, who serves as the head of growth and so much more at Uncovered. For those unfamiliar with Uncovered, it's a website that's basically a software platform to combine data, analytics, and the wisdom of the community to help solve cold cases of murdered and missing people. You can find out more about the website yourself by visiting uncovered.com. Now here's our conversation. Thank you so much for being here today with us, Dana. Why don't you go ahead and start by introducing yourselves a little bit to our listeners? Sure. So my name is Dana Pohl. I never know where to start exactly. I feel like I've lived many lives, but um, I am a librarian and I am a podcaster. My podcast is True Crime PI, and I am the head of community at Uncovered. As the head of community, well, okay, first of all, I I think we need to explain what Uncovered is for our listeners who may not know what it is. I can best describe it as a resource, a database that focuses on missing and unsolved cases, but I would love to hear your description of it. So we are a database of unsolved or cold, missing, murdered, and unidentified cases. We are more than that in the way that we are a crowdsourced database. So we allow the public to, um, and we invite the public to add information to our database. So if you have a favorite case and you see an update that happens in the news or there's a solve in the case, anything that would update that case, you can come to the Uncovered Database and you hit the contribute to a um, case button, you enter your link, you explain what you're adding, and you hit submit. And then that information gets added to the database. So it's kind of crowdsourcing. It's crime crowdsourcing. Also, you know, if you see a case that doesn't have any information or you want to add a case to the database, you can do that. So it's really a public effort to pull all of the publicly available information together in one place. Your role, as already mentioned, has been listed as head of community, and I've also read head of growth. Can you talk a little bit about that and what you do for Uncovered? My main role is basically partnerships, working with the media, working with the community. What I do is I spread the word about Uncovered. I um, am happy to talk to content creators, the media, I reach out to them. I let them know who we are, what we're doing, and how we can help them. So when it comes to content creators, 
I say, you know, hey, we have this resource. If you're doing a podcast on a case and you would like us to add it to the database and you have some research that you've done, you can submit that research to us and we will get that case visualized. If it's already visualized and you have additional photos or you have some information that you would like the case file to contain, you can send that to us. We'll get that loaded. And it also makes it easy for those of us um, independent you know, podcasters who don't maybe have a web- website that allows us to post a lot of photos. You can utilize the Uncovered database. So you can put a link in your show notes and have your listeners go directly to the case file and take a look at all of the information that you're talking about. So I think it's always great when you can, you know, kind of visualize who the person was, maybe some of the other players in the in the story. So if there's a, you know, their husband or a mom or their sister involved in the case, then you can see those people. And it's an easy way for us, you know, for content creators to provide that information to their listeners. The other thing that we do is we work with the media. So if they're working on a case, they might come to us and say, do you have any family members who would be interested in, you know, any cases that you know of where a family member is interested in talking to the media? So then we connect the family member with the journalist. That also happens with podcasts. Sometimes we have a family member come to us and say, you know, I really would love some coverage on my mother's case. Could you connect us with someone? And so then we'll reach out to people in our community who are content creators or even outside of our small community that we have, our membership community. But we'll reach out to the just content creators that we're friends with and we've worked with before and say, are you interested in covering this case? So we're really becoming a hub um, of information and resources that we can connect families with content creators and the media maybe even somebody who can, like an advocate who can help them get more exposure for their case or set up a GoFundMe. And then on the flip side, we are able to provide content creators with a place for them to kind of link to that shows off all the information about their case or contains all the information about their case. And then also, if you're looking for a family member to speak about a case or you're looking for a case that needs covered, we can connect you to a family member. That's actually something we didn't know about Uncovered. We've kind of used it in a roundabout way where, you know, I have used the collected resources there for cases and I've seen, all right, well, who is the next of kin for certain cases? And that's how I've been able to like look them up on social media and then connect them. But it is great to know that we can reach out to Uncovered or anyone on the team and be connected with these families because that's something that we're trying really hard as we continue to grow as a podcast is, is the family involved? You know, not every family is going to want to be involved, but they may still want the coverage. So sometimes we'll get like, yes, please go ahead, but we won't be involved. Or yes, I would like to be involved. Or yes, I would like to only partially be involved. So it is nice to know that there is a place to reach out to families where, um, you know, you're not just DMing them and they're not ready for that type of conversation that day. So like, this is a good place to know that they're going to be reached out to someone when they hear from them, they know like they need to be in the right mental space and everything. It's kind of creating that safe space for those Mm -hmm. families and a way to vet these content creators. I Mm -hmm. I really love and appreciate that as a content creator that, Mm -hmm. you know, we have started to work with families more and more and more as we grow. I would say one of the things we use the most from Uncovered, like Natalie was saying, we have used Uncovered and always linking in our uh, resources, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I have used a lot, like especially with like Elaine Park's case, is the timelines. Mm -hmm. I feel like these timelines, especially for unsolved and missing cases, sometimes they can be a bit jumbly. Crystal Reisinger is one that I think of where the timeline gets jumbly. You have people Mm -hmm. saying, I saw her. You have people saying, I went there. I asked around, she wasn't there, but other people are saying, no, I saw her there. You know, the timeline for these cases can get complicated. So to have a hub where you have, you know, a spot where you can look and it's, yes, this is an agreed upon timeline here. It can be so helpful and it kind of helps you weed out some of the noise that can surround these cases. So that's one of the things I've definitely appreciated about it as a content creator. That's awesome to hear because I think the timelines are the most time-consuming part of creating a visualized case. 
And they're so important. Like the Stephen Smith case, that timeline has so many events. Um, Stephen Smith from the Murdoch trial, what you know, he popped up at that time. We learned about his case. We quickly visualized that and um, it moved from a suspicious death now to a homicide. That timeline spans several years and there's multiple events on that timeline. And so having all of that in one place is from a content creator's perspective, very helpful. It's It cuts down on the time it takes to pull all of those resources together. So we're in the background doing that for you. And I think that is one of the most valuable things about the um, case, the case narratives that we create. We attended a panel, I want to say back in March of 2023, so this year, And one of the Uncovered founders or someone involved with Uncovered was on the panel. And he was saying something that they had noticed as they were launching or looking to launch Uncovered was there are certain cases that tend to get the spotlight. That's just how it's been for years. And a lot of times people don't look past that for other cases that are similar and have less coverage. And what he was doing on the site or what the site does is it will give you recommendations. So say you're looking up Natalie Holloway. That is an internationally known story. But there are a lot of similar cases that have received significantly less coverage. And so after you're done on Natalie Holloway's page on Uncovered, you'll scroll down and there will be multiple other cases for you to look into that are lesser known. And I, I just thought that was so admirable because everyone deserves attention for their missing or unsolved or suspicious death case. And um, that was something that really touched me and I appreciated. And I I wanted to highlight in our interview for Uncovered. Absolutely. So um, the gentleman was Jim Brown. He's our CEO. And um, the event was Season of Justice. And I don't remember exactly what the title was, but a lot of good things came out of that. And it is awesome when Jim has the opportunity to kind of get out there. You know, he's behind the scenes doing all the, uh, you know, the hard stuff, uh, the business stuff. And and so we are excited when we get to see him kind of explain why he chose to start Uncovered and how we work to make sure that lesser known cases get exposure. Every single one of our visualized case files has a share button so that the public can easily share these cases. Again, with the with the suggested cases at the bottom, we try to introduce people to lesser known cases. The database to me is about intaking information from the public. It is about providing information to the public. And it is about allowing people to choose to share those cases and expose them on, you know, to people that aren't actually coming to the database. So if you have friends who are super interested in in true crime, but others who aren't, but they follow you on Twitter and you share a case, they're going to see it. They wouldn't have that opportunity to see it otherwise. So we make it really easy. You don't have to go in and craft a post. You hit the share button, it crafts the post for you. All you have to do is hit send or tweet or whatever. So um, those kinds of things are really, really important because exposure is key, especially in older cases, uh, lesser known cases. They, you know, a lot of times we'll see the same cases getting a lot of exposure and not that they don't deserve it. I mean, any unsolved case deserves exposure. But at the same time, new numbers might say 280,000 cold cases in the United States. So, you know, there are cases that you have never, ever heard of that you could be sharing on social media just to to bring exposure. And that's really what we're doing is giving you the tool to do that. And honestly, I would say it's giving us something to share of Mm -hmm. it, you know, not just an article. It's giving people in the true crime space that whether they consume or create content, it gives them an ethical piece of information. And I use that lightly because it's a lot of pieces of information in Mm -hmm. one spot to be able to share. Like, they're all heartbreaking. But for example, like, oh my gosh, this case is so similar to Natalie Holloway. You should cover it, you know, Mm -hmm. get the exposure on, you know, on your TikTok or, you know, cover it on your podcast, whatever kind of content you're creating. And it allows people to be able to 
have a better time, you know, finding those unsolved and missing cases that need the exposure, say mm-hmm. more than solved ones. I mean, we of course have covered solved ones, but we have completely shifted to unsolved and missing, you know, for those types of reasons, because as true crime content creators, we're starting to understand a lot more through mm-hmm. wonderful people like yourself, like maybe upwards of 280,000 missing and unsolved that need coverage. Like, let's do it. Like, you know, mm-hmm. game on. Let's let's mm-hmm. cover them. Let's work with these families and or other vetted resources that have approval within the family to get it told. And that's what's so mm-hmm. great about Uncovered. It's literally a link that I could, for example, share with Natalie. Hey, check this out. Check mm-hmm. out the next of kin. Let's reach out. It's so, it's really invaluable. And it's not something I think we even had four years ago, really, when we mm-hmm. were starting, or at least that we knew about of any kind of similar databases. That's so true because Uncovered's really in its infancy. This episode is brought to you in part by Every Plate. Every Plate provides plenty of delicious variety, so you'll never have to stress over what's for dinner. With 26 tasty and affordable recipes that change every week, it's easy to find something flavorful and satisfying for every meal of the day. Like breakfast 24-7, 15 minute or less meals, feel good food or big batch faves. Plus, you can add on even more delicious options to your order with over 25 convenient sides, breakfast items, lunches, snacks, desserts, and more. Plus, if you're like my husband, you're going to love the $1 steak for life that every plate offers. You can add a 10-ounce ranch steak to your weekly order for just $1 per box while your subscription is active. Now that's raising the stakes for dinner. On top of all of that, Every plate is super sustainable. They offset 100% of their delivery emissions and their meals have a 31% lower carbon footprint on average than supermarket meals of the same portion. I personally get such peace of mind when my every plate box lands at my doorstep because I know when I get home from my nine to five that I have all the ingredients I need for dinner that night. And I know that it's gonna taste fantastic. It saved me so much time and With my extra time, I was able to work on the podcast after work and spend more time with my family. There's no price tag you can put on that. Get started with Every Plate for just $1.49 per meal, plus $1 steaks for life by going to everyplate.com slash podcast and entering code 49diaries. Subscription must be active to qualify and redeem $1 steak. That's everyplate.com slash podcast and use code 49diaries. Again, you can get started with every plate for just $1.49 per meal plus $1 steaks for life by going to everyplate.com slash podcast and entering code 49diaries. Subscription must be active to qualify and redeem $1 steak. Can you talk a little bit about when you guys got started and how that happened? Mm -hmm. So um, Jim Brown, our CEO, felt that there was a need to address this nationwide cold case crisis. Uh, When he heard about the numbers of unsolved cold cases, and and these numbers are cumulative from 1980. So cases that are unsolved from 1980 until today. um, Actually, the number that we talk about, 200,000, I think was probably in 2019. And that's why I'm saying the number could be upwards to 280,000. So anyway, he he realized this was an issue and he decided that he also wanted to make sure that we addressed the problem of, you know, equalizing exposure of cases. So we need a database that has all of these cases because we're not being driven by the demands of a news cycle or, you know, what viewers tune into. So now we're going to keep feeding them the same type of case. So he realized that a database would be able to accomplish that. He also is concerned with wrongful convictions. So if someone is wrongfully convicted, then we have somebody who is out there in the world committing crimes. And there's a potential that, you know, that's leading to cold cases. So all of that formed together in his mind. And he decided that this is what what he wanted to do. It was established in 2019, I think at the very end of 2019. I came on in 2022. I joined the community in 2021. So we have our database and then we have our membership community. 
I joined the community in, I think, around April 2021. It was very new. There were very few members. In fact, I'm considered a founding member, which I'm super proud of. Um, But I had personally, I'm a librarian, like I said, and I had been researching the missing and unidentified since NamUs and the Doe Network came online. So it would have been about 13, 14 years I, I had been doing that. I loved using those databases. I was a big Web Sleuths user, you know, way back in the day. And so watching, you know, all of this kind of evolve, but knowing there was still something missing. Like I needed a place where like I could go ask a question on how to do this or how to do that and, you know, make research easier. Well, how do you submit a FOIA request and, you know, our Freedom of Information Act request? And so... When I found Uncovered, I was like, okay, it's a database. Okay, it has researchers who want to do the same thing that I want to do and I have been doing for years. And we can be a support group to each other. You know, we can meet and do group work on cases. I mean, it just sounded like it was the one-stop shop for me because when you're doing a podcast and you two are a team, so that's fabulous. I was an independent podcaster and an independent researcher And, you know, what we work on and what we do is not really, not everybody's into it at that level. And so to find a group of people who thought like I wasn't crazy um, and that wanted to talk about these things and discuss them and understood when I asked questions was fantastic. So that is uh, what led me to Uncovered. And um, we, we have just evolved since then. I, like I said, started working in January of 2021 and then... Uh, came on full time in uh, the fall last year. And uh, my title has changed because we're evolving. And so we started out with the, what you had asked earlier about the title and and my title started out as head of growth. And um, that just means, you know, growing the cases, you know, adding more content, adding more resources. We write a lot of articles and we write a lot of kind of resources, usable tools. And so... Um, I oversee that, I oversee the community, and I work with our newsletter. So I'm the editor of our newsletter. We have a newsletter, it's called The Citizen Detective. It comes out twice a week, Tuesday and Thursday. And it's a little bit of a lighter type of content. We usually feature one of our cases or we'll feature one of our articles, but we also talk a little bit about what's in the news and we have some true crime trivia and that sort of thing. So Sometimes this work and, you know, the heaviness of what we read and do every day can be a lot. And so being able to take a lighter approach, like what documentary should you be watching or, you know, what's coming up and, you know, featuring a case based on an anniversary or something like that. That's what we do with the with the Citizen Detective. We've mentioned Citizen Detective and it's also, of course, it's a known kind of thing in true crime, and as Mm -hmm. well as mentioned on Uncovered's website. Can we talk a little bit about the impact and the role that citizen detectives have in the true crime space, especially with missing and unsolved cases like this? So I have always considered myself a citizen detective in that I'm a librarian and I want to do research. So, you know, it was just, it's a, it was a name that I felt really captured the work that I wanted to do. So we have a citizen detective guide that you can download, um, which gives tips and tricks about research and, you know, ethical kinds of things. You know, we make some ethical suggestions about, you know, don't go real life. Don't reach out to the families unless they are, they have said they're interested. Um, We don't want to open old wounds, all those sorts of things. But I think the role of a citizen detective is, you know, it's really important. When I was starting or younger, let's say, so before the internet became something that was just common and we all had access to, it was harder to do this work. You know, I always talk about Todd Matthews, who is, he started the Doe Network and he's considered the first citizen detective because he made a match between a girl that they called Tent Girl and a missing person. And this was in like 1999. He had to do it all without the internet. And he did. So those were, it was harder then. But now that we have access to the internet, just as as the general public has access to the internet and lots of resources, to me, it almost feels like if you have this interest, why not? You know, why not? If you're interested in research, if you're interested, why not 
try to take a case and and work through it. So we have so many people in our community who are interested in in doing this work. They seek us out to become a member of the community so that they can learn how to become a citizen detective, utilize our resources, talk to other people who are considered themselves citizen detectives, partner up with them to do good work and move cases forward. And I I think that is so important because with these types of cases, it really becomes a collaborative process. You need all hands on deck if we want answers for these families and for these people who have lost their lives or, or who are still missing. And that's something that uncovered and you know, this database makes possible. All hands on deck. Everyone's contributing what they can. And hopefully, you can get answers sooner rather than later. That's the goal. Um, that is literally... I mean, that is our mission. That is our goal. Our tagline is together, we can make a difference. And I think that, you know, that is the truth. Like, there isn't one person who's going to solve this. And I think sometimes that's what happens. Like, law enforcement some has in the past thought that it was solely their responsibility to solve a case. We're moving in a different direction. Now, there's a lot of law enforcement who are interested in hearing what citizens have to say. You know, there's community policing where people will go and talk to somebody other than the police to share information for whatever reasons. But then as long as that information gets reported back and is usable, that's a fantastic way to move a case forward. So I think there's a there's been a lot of positive movement in certain departments in certain areas where people are understanding the value of internet sleuths, as we call them, um, who go out and really kind of pull the information together or find a little tidbit or you know, are looking on a Facebook page and someone actually says something that would be really important. And so it can be passed along um, or they can be encouraged to pass it along. We get a lot of people submitting things to us. If it looks like it's um, a credible information, we will submit it to law enforcement. But we don't we don't really do that. We direct them to submit it. If someone thinks they have made a match because we've recently added does to our database, we say to them, here's how you submit this to NamUs and to law enforcement. So we're really like, we guide people. We can't do what the police are doing, but we can do research. We can pull information together. We can also pull people together. So we'll pull together someone from the media to work with a nonprofit, to work with you know, uh, maybe a, a family advocate to work with a, a podcast or a content creator to focus on one case to try to move it forward. So one example of that, we just worked on a case, the Nancy Eagleson case. We just did an event not too long ago that included the Porchlight Foundation, True Crime Garage. We had a reporter from a paper in Ohio. And so we pulled all of the, and the family, we pulled them all together for an event to talk about the case. More than that, we actually were able to connect the family to the Porchlight Foundation and they were able to fund an exhumation of their loved one. So that's really like, that is the ideal model of what we want to see happening. And if we can be a part of that, we're thrilled. If we can model that, we're thrilled because, you know, it's, there are other people who can do that. You you all could do that. But Uncovered is like, this is our what we're trying to do. So when we have a family approach us, and they have a lot of information. Um, you know, we get the case visualized, step one. Step two is we talk to them about what else can we do to help. We might feature it in our newsletter. We'll share it on our social. And then we talk to them about, okay, what else do you need? Um, and if they say we're looking for funding for a billboard, we might say approach season of justice or any other organization that we know. Um, oh, I would love to be on a podcast, but I just don't know who to go to. Well, we have some, you know, podcasts that we know do great work. Um, And that's one of the things that, you know, I think it's really important as a family to be able to talk to somebody who knows, you know, the quality of the work or what they're looking for. If they say, you know, I really want this to be victim centered and I want it to be, you know, um, it's really important to me that these people are empathetic and all that sort of thing, then we know podcasters, we can we can connect them to. And that's really important to us because that's our mission. Like being victim-centered, family-centered is really at at the heart of this. Not every single one of our cases is driven by family. I mean, 
if the family approaches us, submits the case, we do our best to touch base with them. You know, to, some of them just want to send the information, just put the case up. We're good. We'll review it after, or we're we're good. This is fine with us. Others, like you said, want you know this happens to you. They want to be involved, and so we involve them. We we set up a meeting. We have conversations. But every single family that we deal with, they get it. They're free to join our community. They can join our community for free. They can ask for help in our community, reach out to to people who might be able to help them if they want to do a GoFundMe or whatever. But our goal is literally to give them that membership and to say, we're here. How can we help? And connect them to the right people to get this case moving forward. You already know that that's the sound of another sale on your online Shopify store. But did you know Shopify powers selling in person too? That's right. Shopify is the sound of selling everywhere. Online, in-store, social media, and beyond. Shopify POS is your command center for your retail store. From accepting payments to managing inventory, Shopify has everything you need to sell in person. With Shopify, you get a powerhouse selling partner that unites your in-person and online sales into one source of truth. Track every sale across your business in one place and know exactly what's in stock. Connect with customers in line and online. Shopify helps you drive store traffic with plug and play tools built for marketing campaigns from TikTok to Instagram and beyond. Get hardware that fits your business. Take payments by smartphone, transform your tablet into a point of sale system, or use Shopify's POS Go mobile device for a battle-tested solution. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way. Do retail right with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash murder diaries, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash murder diaries to take your retail business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash murder diaries. So not only are you creating a community in the true crime space, but you're creating a community for these victims' families and connecting them with people that can help them further along where they want to be. Yes. Mm -hmm. What kind of resources does it take to keep something like Uncovered thriving? So, and that's why sometimes it's hard for me to like, I can't, I want to wrap it up with a little bow and it's really hard. Like I don't have like this spiel that I can just say and it covers it. So, you know, we have our newsletter, there's ads in our newsletters. We have ad revenue, we have um, membership revenue, um, we have ads on our site. So we get revenue from that. We have investors, um, we apply for grants, you know, we're, we're, we do those sorts of things. And so it is a lot of work. But it is so rewarding. You know, we'll have families come into a meeting and they are carrying the burden of not knowing. That's a tagline from my True Crime PI. But they are carrying that on their backs. And we, by the end of the meeting, we'll say, we're going to get your case visualized. You know, we're going to get it in the newsletter. We're going to do this. We're gonna... You can just see the sigh of relief. Like their shoulders, they relax. They're just knowing that there's going to be an someone who is going to try to help them. And I, there's lots of people who do this, but in all truthfulness, families have to go multiple places to find people to help them. And so sometimes if you want to get on a podcast, you need to fill out a form and then you have to get into the queue and you have to wait. And I think someone who's able to do something almost like immediately just helps them because it's great. They're waiting for Dateline or they're waiting for, you know, Crime Junkie or they're waiting for whatever it is that they're, whoever they think is like the most exposure. And that's where a lot of families go, right? To the, to the big guys. And that just takes a little longer. Sometimes it's harder to get them. You may someday get them, but sometimes it's harder. So immediacy is really important. And so we do our best to at least get a case card on the site as quickly as we possibly can. Visualizing may take a little bit longer in some cases. In other cases, it may not, depending on how much research needs to be done. But then saying, once that is visualized, let us push it on social. So this will all be happening within a you know a short period of time. And connecting you with, if you're willing to, to work with an independent podcaster, somebody who can get this case covered quicker, we can do that for you. You know, we can connect you. That's really good to hear. Just as like connecting content creator to content creator, I think immediacy 
and Natalie, correct me if I'm wrong here, but like without even knowing or thinking about it, that's kind of something we aim for is to, without quality suffering, when a family member is Mm -hmm. coming forward and or, you know, we have made contact in some way, like they were, you know, out there requesting help, support, what have you, we do tend to prioritize those cases because Mm -hmm. we want to do right by them and they spent that time with us and they want that episode out Mm -hmm. there. You know, there's been a couple of times where it's taken a little bit longer just for quality and making sure that all the pieces are buttoned up and that everybody is safe once the content is released because there's a lot of sensitive material to this. Mm -hmm. Again, this is unsolved and missing cases. So the way the information is relayed is extremely important. You don't want to harm the case. You want the information to be correct. And Mm -hmm. so sometimes quality control comes into play. But I do think that, you know, it feels good to hear that because it just kind of felt right. Like when we're working with the family, like we will, we will, we'll move them up on our list Mm -hmm. from that we have planned. Right. Yeah. That's so true what Paige is saying, because it's weird to say this, but as a podcast business, you sort of have to have a plan in place just because you need to be able to say like, give yourself enough time to research certain cases. And as a result, we have like the rest of the year planned out of 2023. But whenever we have a family come forward, it's all the cases need help now, but this person is actively seeking help and how can you turn them down? And that's kind of how we've been running things where we do have a list going. But if a family comes forward, it definitely gets bumped up to the most immediate. And sometimes that makes it a little more nerve wracking too, because at least in my experience, we'll be working with these families and you get to know them and you have hours long interviews with them. And there's this, I I can't imagine how they feel on their end because they just need their loved one's story out there now. But there's always this pressure. I want to do the best I can. And that's where that sense of like uh, what Paige is talking about where you know, we we do need to like, we want it out there as soon as possible, but we always have to do our due diligence. We have to make sure everything's reported as accurately as possible. And it adds that little bit of stress, but like, I'll take the stress on to relieve this family of the teeniest bit that I can. Being able to actually work with the families other than just consuming it, that's a mm-hmm. much more clear way of putting it, changes everything. And it has shifted our perspective. And it's a huge reason why we are again here at doing unsolved and missing cases using amazing resources like unsolved. Absolutely. It it really does when you start working with the families, you see the needs and the you know, people feel like it's like the movies, you know, when someone goes missing, but it's not mm-hmm. like what the families don't know, law enforcement doesn't know, you know, and each little piece that they can get is helpful, but uh, it's not like that. A lot of it is put on the families, actually, more mm-hmm. than you think, because the more that the families can emotionally take on during probably the most difficult times of their lives, the more that law enforcement is supported in their efforts of investigation. And so, yeah, it's it's not like the movies. And I think that that's something that people do not understand. And allowing loved ones onto podcasts and or to work with you on podcasts um, and to talk about their loved one. Um, I think that it's, it gives them a space that they didn't have before, you know, maybe even 10 years ago. I mean, I know podcasts are around, but so it's, mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's an incredible responsibility. I think that, that ethically people that are creating true crime content have that Natalie and I are continuing to learn how to take on. We're not perfect and the space isn't perfect, but man, if you can use it right to support these families, it can be an incredible tool. That was really well said. It's very true. I covered a case in season two and in season one, I did a single on True Crime PI. I did a single case Started out, I was thinking it was going to be an episode and it ended up a seven-part series on a Jane Doe in Cobb County, Georgia. Um, That was interesting. It was really cool how that worked out. The podcast itself led to uh, her case being resubmitted to a task force um, that matches Samuel Little confessions with Georgia homicides. So it's still in the process of going through that re-examination. 
But that was super exciting for my first season. Um, Second season, I decided I was going to do missing people. Wow, was that a different experience. So the first case I did was, uh, I did not interview the family. I just told the story. The second case that I took on ended up being a three-part series. So a, a mom went missing in 1981. I talked to her daughter, her sister, and her son. It took months for me to do that. And I'm not a consistent, you know, I'm not, I do this just kind of as a hobby. So um, on the side and with a full-time job now at Uncovered, it's very hard to do both. But um, but um, whenever I was releasing this series, it was the most draining experience that I have ever had because the case is Lonnie Rogers, Lonnie and Ray Rogers. After the mom, I'm sorry, after she disappeared, they the children lived with the dad and they were taken away from the dad and given back to the dad and lived with the aunt and given back to the dad just for multiple reasons. He was not capable of taking care of them. And so in interviewing the daughter and the son who were in this situation, they were very open about this. This is one of the first times that, you know, that the, I'm the only one that, that Lonnie's son interviewed with. His name is Aaron. And it was heart-wrenching to listen to his stories. I mean, he was abused and all that sort of thing. So to be able to take that and put it together. And then during the podcast, as we were, I was getting together, getting all the episodes together, we would talk about, well, let's wait, not release it because this might happen. Or let's do this because this might be coming like, give me another week because we're looking to see what law enforcement's going to do or whatever. So I was kind of like on this waiting game schedule. And then right when I was getting ready to put together and release the last episode, uh, Allison, who is Lonnie's daughter's stepdad died and she needed time. And so I wasn't going to be, you know, bothering her during her grief, her grieving period. And, you know, so, so we let a a few months go. So it is like you said, I've had different situations where I've had to wait for law enforcement to respond back to me. And sometimes that takes a long time and I don't want to release the episode until I can release it with the information. And so, you know, there's a lot when you involve the families, you have the best experience, it's the most heart-wrenching experience. And it's also a timing thing because, you know, we have to get people together. We have to make sure we get the interviews, all that sort of thing. So I understand that completely. Doing it from the perspective of what we do at Uncovered, creating a case file, it's a little bit different. Um, we'll just, add, you know, we'll meet with them. We They submit us whatever they have that might be extra that we don't know about. We We source everything. So if they have information that they have been told or there's but there's no source for that we will not include that in the case file everything that you see is something that can be sourced and that's difficult sometimes but if they have FOIA documents or they have a police report we do utilize those because that's obviously a source so yeah so it's easier to get the story up you know than it is to create a podcast around it <laughs> i believe but it's always so helpful when the family is involved I always thought of it as it's not my story to tell. It it's your story to tell to, to the family members. So if you want to be involved, I'm happy to tell the story, but I want you, you know, I want your words if that's if you're interested in doing that. Um and and they, you know, there's some family members who no, no, you go ahead and tell it. <laughs> and others who are like, yes, please, I'd love to be involved. That really resonates with us because something that we do say when we reach out to families is we want to lend our platform to you. We built this platform, but it's really not our place to tell your story unless you are asking us to. That's literally like the phrasing we use. Like, this is our platform. We're lending it to you to say whatever you need to say on behalf of your loved one. And so it's nice to hear other creators and someone who is working with and for Uncovered saying the same thing because I feel like that mindset in the true crime community is starting to grow. And um, I hope that a lot more people adopt that uh, way of thinking in the near future. And I, I feel like that's where it's trending. I think so too. I um, The whole ethical true crime movement and a lot of talk about, you know, being victim-centered and how we deliver the story. And these are real people and this, you know, the real families and real feelings and all that sort of thing. So breaking away from, these are just stories that unfortunately but true, they entertain us, right? They, you know, we're, we're interested. I'm, you know, when I was young, I read mysteries. I love Scooby-Doo, you know, 
this is, and then I kind of evolved to true crime um, and understanding like there's people involved. These are real people. I think, you know, I was growing up with the milk cartons. So when the milk cartons first were being used, I was, a, you know, in elementary school and I'm sitting there with my cereal in the morning reading about people who, you know, children who have gone missing. And it was this, it was so strange to me. Like even I can remember sitting at the kitchen table thinking, this is horrible. Like they must be so scared and their parents must be so upset, you know? And, and I think that was really something it's either that that was just in me or that developed in me from just literally eating my breakfast cereal, looking at these different cases every time we bought a different milk carton. And, you know, that's scary when they weren't even repeated. You know, these are, there were so many cases even then that you rarely saw the same face. And so I think that that's what we need, right? We need empathy. We need to truly understand that. It's okay to watch these shows. In fact, it's better than okay if you watch these shows because, or listen to podcasts because maybe you know something that you don't know. Maybe you can, you know, move a case forward with just saying, oh, I remember this guy that lived near there or whatever, because I grew up near there, whatever piece of information you might be able to add, or you start talking about it to someone else, and that person may be have some information on that. So it's really important, but the way we approach it is even more important. And it, that is understanding that these are real people, real cases, and that these families have been, in some cases, carrying the burden of not knowing for so many years you know, I have two sons. If I had to wake up and not know where my son was day after day, year after year, I, I don't know how I would do that. And so I think that's why, you know, I feel it's important to tell these stories. I feel it's important for Uncovered to be doing the work that they're doing. And I think that, you know, m there are many podcasters, content creators, documentarians who are moving in that direction. They understand that there is a growing number of the public who are moving away from sensationalism on these cases and toward empathy. I think that's such a great spot to kind of leave this conversation. Mm -hmm. And we really just want to thank you for your time. And we are always here to help out with any cases when you are referring podcasts or what have you. And we will continue to use uncovered as a resource and we will definitely be checking out True Crime PI. Thank you so much. And I appreciate that. Please do continue to use Uncovered. Feel free to link us in your show notes and we will definitely be reaching out to you because I, I think you all are doing an amazing job telling these stories in just the way that we appreciate and that is victim-centered and family-focused. And Dana, if you don't mind, will you please share where we can have our listeners follow you and Uncovered on social media? Absolutely. So you can follow Uncovered um, on Twitter, on Instagram, and our Uncovered Facebook page. And you can also find me, uh, Dana Pohl, um, True Crime PI on Twitter. And I also have a Facebook page. Fabulous. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's been fun. <laughs> Make sure you follow us on all of our socials at The Murder Diaries Pod. And until then, stay safe. Bye. Seeking the truth never gets old. Introducing June's Journey, the free-to-play mobile game that will immerse you in a thrilling murder mystery. Join June Parker as she uncovers hidden objects and clues to solve her sister's death in a beautifully illustrated world set in the roaring 20s. With new chapters added every week, the excitement never ends. Download June's Journey now on your Android or iOS device or play on PC through Facebook games.